Hi, my name is Marco Birube. I'm a product manager uh, working on migration tools at Red Hat. And in this demo, I will demonstrate how uh, a brand new upstream project called Crane under the Conveyor community to, uh, which is going to help me to migrate some applications from one Kubernetes cluster to another Kubernetes cluster. So let's look at how Crane works. Uh, so right now I have uh, two mini cubes environment, but those could be like any Kubernetes cluster. Uh, just here for demo purposes, uh, if, if we look at my Minikube, I have a source cluster and I have a destination cluster. Um, and then the, what I want to do is to migrate an application on the source cluster. So if we look at uh, kubectl context source namespace, uh, I'm just going to do get, I'm sorry, get namespace. Then you'll see here that I have an inventory namespace, and this is the application that I want to migrate over. So if I do dash dash namespace inventory at all, you'll see that I have an inventory service and a Postgres service. And if I would do get PVC, then you'll see that this is backed by a one gig volume. So this is just a front end and a back end, a Postgres back end. Uh, if I would want to look at this application here, I can actually just curl this web service here. I have the IP address, and this is just a list of stuff that is in the database with the front end that exposed that. So this can be any application that has uh, even states or volume that also needs to be migrated. And on top of just migrating it, I actually want to push this to Git so that it can be automatically redeployed to any cluster in the future. Uh, using, in this case, I will use Argo CD as my uh, CD solution to actually provision this automatically for me. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm first I'm going to use the crane tool right as I was saying to do that and um, So just to make sure first I'm going to set my context. I'm just using a tool here that is called kubectx It's just setting my kubernetes context to the source side um, and Then that this allows me to just do uh, kubectl without having to specify the context all the time But here if I would do my get namespace here, I have this and if I have do kubectx destination and I do kubectl get uh, an S, then I'll have no uh, inventory service on this side. So right, you see, you see what I'm trying to do. So here I'm going to go back to the source context, and I will export uh, my inventory namespace. So here I'm going to use the crane export command. So crane comes with a bunch of different commands, like it's a, it's a, it has uh, multiple capabilities. But here, the first thing that I'm I'm going to do is use the export function. And I'm going to specify uh, the namespace that I'm, I'm, I want to export uh, to file. So it's going to be called inventory. And this will create an export folder. So if I do export here, oops, I'm missing an E. And you can see that I have uh, everything was extracted from my source cluster into YAML files. But one of the issue with uh, those files is that they, I cannot just re-import them into another cluster because uh, if we look at those files, oh, let's see, we can look at um, the the service definition, right? So if I would look at this service, oops, resources. What am I doing wrong here? Inventory and then service, oops, sorry. Inventory, inventory YAML. So if I would open one of those files, you would see right cluster IP addresses are coded in there, like timestamps, all kind of things that I don't want to push to get because when it's going to be reprovisioned to another cluster, like this should not be there. I'm going to be in a brand new cluster with brand new IP addresses. Uh, so the second thing I'm going to do to fix that is to use uh, what we call the transform command. So crane as a transform mechanism uh, that will allow me to clean those manifests before I can push them to get. Uh, and this leverages plugins. If we look at the plugins that are available, so not available, but right now is actually set up. So right now I'm using the Kubernetes plugin, which is great. This is what I need to migrate from Kubernetes to Kubernetes. If I would want to migrate to OpenShift as an example, then I would go to my plugin manager and then I would find the OpenShift plugin, and then I could install that plugin, and this would also help me to translate some of those manifests into OpenShift compatible manifests. In this case here, I'm going to keep that on um, 
on from Kubernetes, so I don't need to do that. Uh, I could also use all kinds of other optional transform mechanism here. So if I look at optional, I could add some annotation, I could replace the registry, like there's all kinds of things that you might want to fix or change uh, before you're actually pushing this to get uh, or removing things that actually is going to get automatically added when you are provisioning. So uh, in this case here, we're going to go simple. I'm just going to use what's there by default for Kubernetes. I'm just going to do green transform. It's going to pick up what's actually inside my export folder, and it's now going to create the transform folder that is here. And in this transform folder, uh, you can see that as uh, a list of actually uh, patches that are going to get applied later to my original manifest to create new ones that are cleaned up. But this is done in a non-destructive way. So this allows me to actually uh, look into what is going to get changed before uh, it's actually getting changed. If I go back to the same original file here, I would see that, oh, this is going to remove from this file. It's going to remove uh, some pads, some timestamps, some cluster IP addresses I was showing before. So you can review all those changes that are going to get happen before actually they do happen. Once you are happy with the changes that are going to be made, uh, and you can test this out pretty easily just by the with the apply command. So if I do create an apply, this will apply those patches to my original uh, files and will create another folder that's called output, which now have my brand new cleaned up manifests that are ready to be pushed into a, a new cluster. There's only one little thing here that I'm going to change is actually uh, what I want to do is uh, I could I could just do a kubectl apply of those files into my destination cluster. But actually, in this case, I want to put that to git because I want git to I want Argo CD to provision uh, this application for me. So I'm just going to specify my git repository folder in the apply command instead of just the output default folder. So now this is going to go to Git, and, um, and Argo will be able to pick this up. So now I'm ready to start thinking about, OK, now I need to build that application on my destination cluster, right? So I'm going to change my context uh, for my destination cluster. And I'm going to create uh, the new namespace that I need, right? The inventory namespace, so kubectl dash dash context. Well, I didn't have to do that because I'm already in that context, but it doesn't hurt. Uh, create namespace inventory. So now I have my inventory namespace that is ready. Um, now I have to uh, look into the namespace that, uh, not the namespace, sorry. So now before I get Argo to provision into that namespace, all the brand new manifest I have, I also, ha I also need the data, right? The, that PV with my database information also need to be ported over. So I can use another crane command to do that, which is called transfer PVC. Um, but before we do that, I need to know what namespace, uh, what PV, what is the name of that PV that I need to move over, right? So I'm just going to look into it by doing another kubectl command on the server side. And I'm going to check in my namespace inventory. I'm going to look at the PVC. And I see here that I have uh, one PVC that's called Progress PV Claim, and this is what I want to actually migrate over. Uh, so I'm going to use the crane uh, transfer PVC command. And I'm going to specify my source context, which is going to be source. I'm going to specify, let's make sure I'm not making mistakes here, PVC dash name. And that's going to be the name of the PVC that. I want to bring on over, and I'm going to do the destination context, which is the destination cluster. Oops. So now I'm picking up that PV, uh, PVC on the source side, and I'm migrating it on the destination side. And that's going to take a few minutes. Uh, it's not that long, but what this does in the background is actually launching um, an rsync server in a pod on the destination side and an rsync client on the source side. rsync will then attach itself to uh, the, that PVC that I want to migrate and will push all the data. So it's a file level copy of all the files. So 
one of the beauty of this is I can actually do this multiple times. So if I would want to do this and reduce my downtime, then I could run this once. Um, and while my application is, is running. Uh, and then what we would recommend is to shut down the application during a maintenance window on the source side and then run this again. And the second time I'm running this, then it's only the delta from the last time I've done this copy that is uh, that our sync will pick up, right, and copy over. Uh, so this can significantly reduce the amount of downtime, but we still recommend the application on the source side to be down during the final copy to make sure there's no data in memory or there's no locked file while, while our thing is copying the data over. So now my, my PV exists on the, on the destination side and I'm ready to actually provision uh, this application. Um, and, and I could just do a simply, like I have an output here with all my YAML, right? So, I could just simply do a, a kubectl uh, apply of those files and, and it would work. But but again, like the it's, it's much better if I can get this fully automated in Argo. So this is what we're going to do now. And um, and to do that, I have created here an Argo file. And Argo is pretty simplistic. I'm just specifying where my Git repository is. So this is where I actually push all my Kubernetes manifest. Uh, the namespace that I want that I want to provision this to, and the, the server, and that's pretty much it. So uh, I just need now to apply this file so uh, into my um, Argo CD. So here I'll have the command here already pre prepared. So I'm just going to be paste it. So I'm kubectl context destination in the namespace Argo CD. I'm creating this application. And now Argo is going to pick this up. So let's uh, let's look at Argo and see uh, how Argo is actually getting this provision. So here I'm now in the Argo CD um, user interface, and you can see my inventory application. And if I click on it, you can see that Argo picked up all the Kubernetes manifest from my Git repo and automatically provisioned that, even attached this to actually uh, my database backend. So my app now is is fully running, got provision in the future. Then I can resync this from uh, my Git repository anytime, or I can even go look at the history and, and roll back any change. So if I would want to make any change of this app, of this application from this point on, I can just make changes to my Git repository, and Argo will pick up all the changes and then reapply those changes automatically to to this namespace. So that was it. That was how to actually uh, migrate an application using Crane. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. Thank you.